Hey, this is The Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk a little bit more about scope creep. Okay, so a few days ago I did a video where I talked about adding a margin to your quote for those of you who work with clients, right? And a lot of you have asked a lot of questions about that to talk a little bit more about scope creep because it's such an important thing. So I thought I would talk about it a little bit more today and if there's anything else you want to know then, then we'll talk about that in the future. I'm not an expert and I've been burned so many times before. I mean, scope creep is something that's so important that it can completely, well, it can ruin the project but can also really hurt your confidence as a developer or as a developer developer who works with clients, right? Because it's easy if, you, if you're in a software development company and you have a manager that could say no, yes, and no, and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes when it's just you and the client, it could be a little bit more difficult, especially if you're the kind of person who doesn't like to say no, right? And I'm, I'm definitely the kind of person who doesn't like to say no, right? So, uh, so, so today what I want to do is I want to answer a question uh, uh, from the other day's video from, uh, from iOS development. He said, Interesting comments on scope creep. It's the thing that stops me uh, being a freelancer. Eric, can you tell us how many times you've terminated an agreement because the specs got out of control? Now, actually, I've never terminated uh, an agreement. I never stopped a project halfway through, right? And the reason for that is I always ask for uh, like a deposit up front. So uh, we always ask for 25% of the project up front. And that's not because we need the money. It's mainly because I don't feel comfortable doing a project unless the unless there's been an investment by both sides. Because basically, if you're doing a project for a client, you're it's, it's strange to think of it this way, but you you're actually extending them a line of credit. You're doing work for them on credit, yeah, you know, until they pay you. So you have to minimize the amount of risk that's involved. So if they put down a like a 25% deposit on the project, then at that point they've invested enough that they can't just walk away from it. But then again, neither can you. So you kind of you're both in there. And I've been I've been burned by uh, by scope creep and actually not properly quoting so or or not managing the client well enough because it's easy to blame the client on a lot of this stuff and sometimes they really are to blame. But but most of the time I find it's me. It's me not wanting to say no and not putting my foot down on a lot of things. So it's you know trying to keep the client happy and everything like that. And this is why it's important to add a margin. And it's something I didn't do in the early days, right? And and I I have there's I have one or two clients who, that I always think of whenever we take on another client project because I think that was a bad experience and I don't want to do that again. So, while I won't uh, stop a project part way through, or at least I haven't yet, um, I, I do always, I am very, very careful about the projects we take on now. And this is one of the things where I won't, I won't give up a quote over the phone or, um, well, I, I mean, I will over the phone, especially if we just, you know, talking by phone, if, you know, sometimes they're far away. Some of our clients are in the States and, and in other places. So, but I won't do it like, through an email. So like a lot of times I'll get an email with two or three sentences saying, so how much would that cost? Now I will, will give a ballpark, right? And now a ballpark is easy because you can just say, uh, based on what you've told me, I would say I'd probably between, you know, you know, five to 7,000 or something like that, right? And that's, don't, I'm not telling you how much I charge, by the way, that's just a, a figure I'm putting out there. And sometimes I will go on the high side because what you want to do is, is, just let them know that what they're looking at you don't want to you're not trying to lowball estimates at this point you're just trying to say give them a range it could be between this and this but we would need to know we would need to sit down and go through the requirements first All right so then once we do that we'll sit down and go through requirements uh and and we'll put together a specification and try to say what will be included in the project and won't what won't be included in the project now this is what everybody will tell you make sure you you include what's not going to be in there but it really depends on the client. So, one of the things that so one of the times where I really had trouble with a client is a client was not technically they, they didn't have a lot of technical skills, which is fine because that's you know the reason they hire me is because they don't have technical skills. I don't expect them to be a software developer, but there were little things like this project included a lot of data, and they were sending me like text files with notes off to the side and things like that like I was supposed to transcribe them or something and I said well could you you know what what I would like is if you put this in Excel or some sort of CSV format and they didn't understand what that was and I would try to explain it and it was just it was really hard because they just 
it was the the technical literacy was was so low. I mean, it's it's hard it's hard to imagine now. It's when I talk about it, it's you know my you know it's like I got a call once on a Sunday from a client. Uh, I was just out shopping with my kids and stuff like that, and I get a call and I thought, oh, this looks, this might be urgent, and I ask it, and I answer the phone, and he says, Eric, you, you got to help me out here. I know this isn't, this isn't anything related to the app, but you know, I just, I just restarted my computer, and now all my programs are gone. And I said, uh, what kind of computer do you have? He says, it's a Mac. And I said, have you ever rebooted it before? Because I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what that means. And I said, well, I said. Probably what happened was when you restarted it, you probably went into a different user account. So if you restart it again and go, you know, you should see two icons, choose the one that has your picture on it. He goes, uh, oh, no, never mind, Eric, I figured it out. And then, he, and then he left. I'm just standing there in the mall, kind of like shell shock, like this is what my life has become. Right. So anyway, I had to have a chat with him after that. You know, I was, I was willing to help out, but, you know, just not I'm not the 24 hour tech guy. Right. So. So one of the things I, I'm really careful about choosing the right person or, or the right clients to begin with. And a lot of times, it, it, so while I won't stop a project partway through, I will say in the, in the early stages, I don't think we're a very good fit. And that's usually after having a few conversations. So to give you an example, I did this just last week uh, with, a, with a client or prospect, whatever. Right? And they, they called me up, it was this company, uh, someone had call, called me up and, I, and I, we had a nice conversation for like an hour. Actually, I was in my underwear when we had this conversation because I, the weekend before I had changed my taps on my sink because one was leaking and it kept leaking even after I changed the washers. So I, I thought I would just go buy some, some new taps and I'd just change them out because I'm a man and all that kind of stuff. And then it just leaked everywhere, right? And then I just, I, I finally got it fixed right, with like lots of putty and stuff like that, really bad craftsmanship. And then, you know, during the day it just started spraying out all over the place and I had to go home and fix it. And I didn't want to get my clothes dirty so I stripped down to my underpants. So and then I and then I started getting loads of phone calls. So I'm sitting there sounding very professional with my iPad, covered in grime with the water turned off in the house. Anyway, just to put that thought in your head. But it was it was a very nice conversation and he said, We're making a decision on this today. So if you could get us something today that would be great. Now this is just before I was going off to Oslo. So it was like I just had a few hours to do this, so I fixed the tap. At least, you know, good enough. We ended up calling a plumber a few days later. <laughs> yeah, don't ever call me, you know, I could do apps, but I can't do, I could do apps, but I can't do taps. Right, so, uh, so, I, so I gave them, you know, the same thing I always do, I, you know, uh, I always take a lot of care into do the first, uh, the first quote. I always do like, some wireframes, I'll do a flow chart. Uh, if necessary, I'll do a flow chart. I always do an architecture diagram. By the way, always include an architecture diagram uh, in your when you send stuff to clients. They always look the same, right? That's because it's really easy. You don't do it because it really, it just impresses people. You know, and it's always the same. It's database, server, API layer, cloud, app, maybe the push notification, APNS push notification server over here, right? And it doesn't really mean anything, but it really impresses the mere mortals, right? So, so yeah, so you send it out to them, right? and that was fine and everything. And then the ne the following Monday, when I got back from uh, from Oslo, I had a like a message waiting, and it was somebody else saying, "Eric, you spoke to my colleague uh, the last week, and you sent that through that thing. Thank you very much for sending that. But the thing is, it's all wrong. He was wrong about that. So basically, it's this, this, and this. So then I thought, okay, so." We had a quick conversation and I changed the document, sent it off to them, and then they said, hmm, actually we've been thinking about it and actually it's, it's not that, it's something else. And then, and then I just said, I, I just don't think we're gonna be a very good fit for each other, right? Mainly because they were proving to be what I call a high maintenance client, right? They were, you know, every, yeah, some clients are just, you get, you get the feeling that they're gonna be high maintenance. Like already they've already in this short, we hadn't even started working for them and already they've changed decision makers, which if you ever want to ru ruin a project, bring in another decision maker. That's ruined so many projects. You see, you're going along nicely, everybody's happy. And then they said, let's show it to Dave because he's going to be using this too. And then Dave comes in and said, change it, change it, change it, change it. Right. It always messes up. And this happened like in the spec stage. So, so in the end, I mean, it, and I, so I gave them a ballpark figure that was on the high side. I thought it was on the high side. 
Uh, and then in the end I said, it's, it's just not going to be a good fit, and which is, which was better to do that early on. It's better, you know, because when you take on a client, you, you are establishing a relationship and you are going to be working closely with them and you're going to have disagreements, right? They're going to come up and they're going to come up with scope creep and you're going to have to say, yes, that's acceptable. No, that's not acceptable, right? It's because it would be nice if you had somebody working on your behalf. Like if you're working in a software company and you had a project manager that would go in there, or whatever, or even better yet, if we had like, we could go on the people's court or something like that. And it could be like, they could be the prosecution and you could be the defense. And the prosecution says, your honor, I would like to introduce GPS functionality into this application. The defense says, objection, scope creep. And then, your honor, if it may please the court, although this was not mentioned in the spec, we do believe this is expected functionality and it does, it is implied in the specification. And then the judge can say, Overruled, right? So, but you don't have that. So you have to do that too, because sometimes they'll make very good points. To, as an example, this is embarrassing to say, but every time I do a login screen, I always forget the bit about forget password. The forget password link that, you know, if you forgot your password, send the password and everything like that. And sometimes we don't include it because there's no mail server. And that's one of the kind of things where you wouldn't include it in this, you know, we won't include this because you assume they know that and sometimes they don't. Anyway, I don't mean to keep rambling on about this, but I think if, you, if you've been burned by uh, scope creep or bad client before, I mean, I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've sworn off client work, right? This is, that's it. I'm not going to do client work anymore. We're just going to focus on our own apps, right? And then, and then I think, well, no, it's, it's kind of fun to work on other people's projects. It's kind of fun to, to, to keep those skills active because sometimes you, 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 know, you use skills that you wouldn't, wouldn't need. They'll come to you and say, Eric, I've got this idea. I've got this thing, this component over here, and this, you know, this API over here. And what I'm trying to do is mix this with this, and anything. Oh, that sounds that sounds like fun. I'll, I'll work on that. But the only way you you need to have some power in the relationship, and I don't mean you when they come. If somebody comes to you and they want you to work on their project, what you don't want to do is is have this master slave relationship where they're you know they're just waving the money and you're saying I really need the money you know and and the way to keep that keep from that is to have a full pipeline right in the same way I, I mentioned before when I when I quit my job and I was looking for another job I was you know all the interviews I was doing badly until I had you know two or three interviews lined up and then I was just confident and relaxed right so if you have several clients in the pipeline or even several client projects that you're working on, then you are more in a, you know, I have the skills, you have the need. If we gel, then we work together. And don't worry if you have to tell them that you can't work on it because in the long run, it's better for both of you. And you still add value because you, you know, you have a technical discussion with them. You know, they, they're not quite sure what to do. And you could say, you know what I would do. Here's how I would organize everything. You could use you could use Firebase for this. You could use you know, push notifications here. You could do this. We would lay it out this way. Unfortunately, I can't work on it. Right? So you know, and so so that's you know the way to do it. And when you're sitting, you know, when you're sitting with them, it's the same as if you go into a job. If you go into a job interview and you're like. I need this job. I need this job. I'm just going to, you know, I hope they have this for me. Then, uh, you know, then you're going to, you're not going to do well because the confidence is not there. But if you go in there saying they have a need, I have a skill, you know, may, you know, I will change, trade my skill for money and, you know, we'll see if we work well together. Right. Cause you don't want to do is get in that relationship where it's just a, uh, you know, you, you know, you'll do anything for money. Cause that, that never, that never works out. And I've done that. I, I remember back in the early days sending out a specification to a company. This was a web thing. So it was like a long time ago and sending a spec to a company or a quote and, and what they, and yes, I sent it and five minutes later, I'm waiting to see, hear back from them. Refresh, refresh, refresh. And then, you know, an hour later, refresh, refresh, refresh. And I'm waiting, you know, make sure the phones aren't there and everything thinking they're going to just call me up right away. And, uh, and just really desperate, like a, like a lovesick teenager or whatever. And, uh, you know, make sure, you know, the next day you wait for the phone and sending that email going, Hey, I just want to make sure you got my, my quote, yeah, any thoughts. And then, yeah, oh, I just want to make sure whatever. And just, nag, 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 and they're not interested. And part of the reason is I'm just too needy, right? So if you have a full pipeline, you know, I think that you, you have a lot more strength in the relationship and that's what they're looking for. They're looking for a confident developer, which, which is what, you know, which is what you are in most, most situations. But for some reason, when you get in that, you know, the negotiation thing, it, it, it doesn't work out. So, but I think you can get out of a contract, but make sure you have that clause in your contract. So anyway, I hope that helps. I know that's a bit rambly. This, wow, this video is really long. Sorry about that. 
Hey, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.